And it looks like Eddie Jones has gone full Eddie Jones. Welsh, Georgian and Fijian fans are left celebrating, while Wallabies fans are left scratching their heads. I'm going to run through all the details, guys, and explain to you why there might be method to the madness here from Eddie Jones. Let's roll that intro. <laughs> Kia ora everyone, my name's Zach, I love rugby, welcome back to Hakka Time Rugby. So the Wallabies announced their squad, it is full of surprises and it's all anyone is talking about. To say that Eddie Jones has captured the attention of the rugby world would be an understatement, he's made some bold calls, it's an eye to the future, and it's very much a squad that is looking to move forward from the past, you know, obviously the losing ways that the Wallabies have had over a significant period of time. It looks like Eddie Jones has just ripped the band-aid off, has made a decision, we are backing the younger guys, and he's moving forward. I think it is a bold, bold selection. Given all the criticism that's coming Eddie's way, you know, you have to say he really is digging his heels in, and he's having a good crack at this. He obviously believes in the method that he is trying to implement, the Australian style that he's trying to bring back, and he has gone with an eye to the future. He mentioned it in his press conference, 2027 is their target. This gives a few of those players that are newish, younger players coming through um, an opportunity to develop within the World Cup context. But he also thinks that this is a squad that can actually compete for the Rugby World Cup. I think there is some method to the madness here. So I'm going to use this video just to explain why I think that, guys, and why I actually think this might be the Wallabies' best opportunity for winning this World Cup. I'm not saying they will go on to win it. I just think that they give themselves a chance here with both the style that they're looking to play as well as the players that they have selected. So let's go through the team. We've got Angus Bell, who is just playing very, very well at the moment. Um, Ponifa Masuli also. You know, these two guys are obviously the starting props um, and will be supported by James Slipper and Taniela Tupo if he is fit. Um, the hookers, so Dave Parecki is likely to start. Jordan Ulysses has seen a lot of minutes in the rugby championship. And then when we look at the locks, this is probably the first, the really, really big surprises. Will Skelton is named as captain. That's a huge call. But one thing that you can expect from Will Skelton, Skelton is he, that he is a player that has proven winning experience, and he is a player that the team will rally around and want to follow. He's someone that will not let you down in terms of his role. He may not be the most chatty guy or the guy that's going to capture everyone's attention verbally, but he certainly does it with his actions. Richie Arnold, Nick Frost, and Matt Phillips also there in the locks. The back row is where we see some major, major surprises and major omissions. So Pete Samu, Jed Holloway, and 125 test um, former captain, Michael Hooper, not selected in the squad. Instead, they've gone with Lungy Gleeson, Tom Hooper, Rob Leota, who's playing very, very well there as the replacement player. Fraser McWright is favoured in that fetcher role over Michael Hooper, and Rob Valentini, who we know is just playing out of his skin. Fantastic player, him. Um, a lot has been made around potential injury there for Michael Hooper, that he is fit and available potentially for that first game or the, uh, the warm-up game against France. Now... I think this provides, that injury provides the perfect excuse for Eddie Jones not to select him and for him to move on. So a lot being made around, you know, potential injuries being the cause. I don't think that is the case. There's actually a number of players within the squad that are carrying injuries. So it's really inconsistent in terms of that messaging of players that are injured um, and may not be available for selection and therefore Hooper was not selected. Look at Tani Tupo, for example. Injured um, ribs. We know he played that game where he should have come off sooner. And um, he is carrying an injury. So, And there are other players in here as well carrying injuries. So I just think that's a bit of inconsistent messaging. It's a convenient excuse. I honestly believe that Eddie Jones wanted to go in a different direction. And he has proven that with the selections here. Um, to the scrum half. So Isaac finds Lelewasa comes in um, a bolter out of the blue. Probably Max Jorgensen is the other major bolter. I actually quite like that we've got a couple of players that no one was talking about who just find a way to, to make it into the squad. Congratulations to those players, to their families. Um, they will be absolutely buzzing. And we don't often get genuine bolters these days. I find that you know there's a lot of chatter, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on social media, about potential players that could be coming in, about leaks in and around the team. These are two genuine bolters from my perspective. And... You don't see it from many other teams. It's actually quite, you know, I think it's a really, really good thing 
that he's introduced a couple of genuine bolters just to lift the excitement within the group with a little bit of youth and enthusiasm. Max Jorgensen, obviously still a teenager, 18 years old, um, will be around 19, I think, once the tournament itself kicks off. Um, but in terms of the rest of the scrum halves, Tate McDermott has given the captaincy role, the vice captaincy role, and Nick White retains his spot. I mean, when you look at the names that have been omitted, and I'll just run through the full list, Pete Samu, Jed Holloway, Michael Hooper, Ryan Lonergan, um, another guy I expected to be in the squad, not selected, Quade Cooper, Bernard Foley, Len Ikital. I mean, these are guys and names that have been around for a long time. Significant number of Wallabies test caps there. Not selected and going in a different direction. So Nick White, I think, also fits into that list of players who has been part of the Wallaby squad for some time. Um, but they are really getting short here on scrum half, so I'm not surprised that he was selected. Uh, he was probably one of those players, though, that must have been close in terms of selections because... Um, you know, he hasn't he hasn't been fantastic in the rugby championship, but he does bring a wealth of experience, so that'll be of benefit to the squad. One fly half selected, it's Carter Gordon. I, I reeled off a couple of names that, you know, we expected to be there. Quade Cooper, um, potentially Bernard Foley. Now, Eddie Jones has spoken about those two players in particular, getting some time for Australia A, whether or not they want to be a part of that setup or not, remains to be seen. But Carter Gordon very much has the keys to this team. He has been backed by Eddie. And this is typical of Eddie Jones' style. He'll identify a couple of guys and he'll just back them to the end. You know, whether it's a positive outcome or a negative outcome. And we have seen mixed results from Carter Gordon. I thought he was fantastic as a closer to match this during the Rugby Championship. Um, in those two games that he started, mixed performance. Um, there was 40 minutes, as we know, against the All Blacks where he performed very, very well. Um, but the rest of the time, I would say he struggled in terms of just getting uh, execution and tactical kicking, as well as goal kicking. And that's another problem within the squad is, you know, in terms of the goal kicking options, you've got Carter Gordon, you've got Ben Donaldson there listed as a utility who will also um, be kicking goals, and Nick White is the other option there. But in terms of experience at the top level, goal kicking is very important in the Rugby World Cup. This squad lacks that, that skill. It's something they can build. Um, you know, these professional athletes, I expect them to be able to step up in the big moments. Um, but in the top echelon of the sport at a Rugby World Cup, that's a difficult place to learn your trade. So let's see how they go. The other person filling that utility, utility back slot, um, Josh Kemeny. Um, from the centre's perspective, for Keti, Samu Karevi, we expected Parisi and Jordan Pattaya. Jordan Pattaya seems to be favoured there at the 13 role, obviously with Samu Karevi, another person carrying somewhat of an injury cloud there. Outside backs, I mentioned Max Jorgensen, Andrew Calloway still in the squad, Ma Marika Koribete and Mark Nawanga Nitawasi also there. Those three players look pretty settled in terms of the back three, um, Koribete, Calloway and Nawanga Nitawasi, and are playing well, actually. So, um, you know, as we go through this list, there's very much a settled 15. There's options there around the 23. Yes, there is inexperience, but there is enough here to be competitive, I think, from a Wallaby's perspective. Um, Vunivalu comes in, however. That's a surprising selection, um, given he hasn't performed well against the Springboks. He looked all at sea, um, tactically out of position, and struggling for confidence. So let's hope that he can find some confidence. I think um, you know we've certainly seen him in rugby league just be a fantastic player. If he can find confidence, he can be an outstanding player for the Wallabies. So that is the Wallabies squad. As I mentioned, some interesting, interesting selections. Um, obviously an eye to the future. And now I'm going to go through what I believe is the good, the bad, and the ugly of the squad. Okay, the good. Will Skelton is captain. I think that is a masterstroke. I think it's a fantastic selection from Eddie Jones. Um, and it's consistent with his approach over his history, identifying players that, you know, under the captaincy, they can mold into both great players, but also really grow and develop into strong, leading men. He did the same with Michael Leach in Japan. He did the same with George Gregan in the early stages of the Wallabies. And um, the following book actually outlines it perfectly. There's a great story around Michael Leach's evolution. You know, obviously not of Japanese descent, but spent a lot of time in, Jap in Japan and very much acclimatized to the culture and the culture being somewhat apologetic um, or at least not being as boisterous, I guess, in that culture as, as others might seem. But Eddie Jones had to sort of remind 
Michael Leach, that he's not Japanese. That he's actually of Polynesian descent, and that within him is a you know a fire, a, an aggression that he needs to bring out if he really wants to dominate at the international level. He helped him do that, and there's a great moment during the Miracle of Brighton actually where they had an opportunity to you know to level the game with a penalty out in front, but instead they went for the win. And Eddie Jones just quietly said to himself, "Well done, mate," to Michael Leach because he actually stepped up. You know, and it's not necessarily aggression, but supreme confidence that they can go out and do it. And I think that was one of those developmental moments as a coach where you kind of look at the work that you've done, the support that you've given, you know, that real sort of attempt to try and tease the best out of an individual, and you actually get it in the moment. And that happened under the captaincy and development that can happen as part of the captaincy for Michael Leach. They very much see Will Skelton as a similar approach that they believe that under the captaincy that he can develop into a strong, strong leader. And I think it's as simple as leading by example, you know, just being the first person there, um, doing everything you're supposed to do and ensuring that your team know that they can trust that you will do that. That's how he will lead. And within, you know, that development, this um, journey, he will find his voice for sure. But right now um, he's just been asked to do, you know, just to be himself, just to play his style and just to lead from the front. And I think as a selection for captain, Will Skelton is perfect for that. The ugly is definitely the inconsistency in the messaging. I think Eddie Jones is a master of capturing attention, as we know. Um, certainly a lot of the heat and the focus on the squad is not on those debutants, on those younger players. It's firmly on Eddie Jones and his decision-making around these selections. So maybe it is you know, part of his, his method is to ensure that all of the heat is on him and therefore let's introduce um, and play this in a way that does command attention directly at the coach. Um, but there are just so many inconsistencies around the messaging. I mentioned those players that are potentially injured like Michael Hooper and they said based on the injury cloud that he's under, they prefer to go in a different direction. But there are those players that are also under an injury cloud. And I just wanted to show this graphic because I think one of the talking points now as well is why wasn't this considered during the rugby championship you know four games to really develop these these members that you're bringing in i think it really came down to eddie jones seeing the evolution of this team and the future of this team in that 40 minutes against the all blacks when you look at this the squad and how the rugby championship has played out he very much went with a lot more of those names that we know and recognize in previous wallaby squads in that first match against the springboks they got absolutely demolished Right, so Quade Cooper certainly wasn't playing at his at his best. Um, Tom Wright, a lot of criticism came on him, and the front row actually suffered there. Now it is against the Springboks, dominant um, set piece in South Africa. That's also difficult, but I believe that a lot of these players who have been omitted have had their opportunities in this Rugby World Cup cycle, and also within Eddie's four games in charge. You look at the first two teams, um, very much consistent lineups here. Um, one thing about Pete Samu is he was called upon to play a significant number of minutes against the Springboks uh, with Tom um, Hooper coming off early. I thought that the makeup of the back row there, you had Michael Hooper, Pete Samu and Rob Valentini. It was really off and it was far too light to compete against you know some of the better um, forward packs and the larger forward packs that we see around the Rugby World Cup. So I think that was kind of a bit of a telling point for Hooper and for Pete Samu that Maybe they're just not offering enough in terms of winning the collision and winning the forward ball. I still think Pete Samu is one of the better options as that utility sort of back row cover off the bench. He can slot into a number of positions and he really is good with ball in hand. So, But Hooper, I think, or the combination of those three in particular, just weren't able to win collisions, weren't able to dominate the ball. And Eddie Jones' new style is very much about winning the collision and winning that front foot ball. Um Against the Pumas, it was key moments that really let them down, you know, and uh, Quade Cooper was front and center in that. You look at the um, All Blacks domination of the Wallabies. Now, Carter Gordon was given the keys, obviously, there um, to start. He had a an average game, I think, but there were moments that they looked at that and said, yes, that is the style they're playing. And um, it's actually starting to come to the fore. The likes of Angus Bell playing well there. Um, Tom Hooper playing well also in that game. And then you translate it to that 40 minutes of dominance, actually, that the Wallabies had against the All Blacks in the first half. And it all started to come together. Um, Carter Gordon running the ship a little bit better. Uh, Tate McDermott 
obviously playing captain that day. Um, the forwards starting to get front foot ascendancy, including that back row combination. So I just think Eddie Jones has looked at it and said, we need to go in this direction against the All Blacks that started to really dominate. We just need to do it for longer periods of the game to really be successful. And he's all in on that approach, right? So he's gone all in on players that can play to that style and that can win the game in that Australian style that he's looking to build. So while it is sad that a lot of these players, you know, you know, great greats of the game as well, the likes of Michael Hooper and Quade Cooper, um, will not feature or will not get the fairy tale feel, farewell that they obviously wanted. I believe they had have they have had their opportunities, and Eddie Jones saw in that All Blacks game that this team can be successful. These younger guys can be successful, and I'm going to back them to build that because that's what we need in the 2027 Rugby World Cup. So. I see method to the madness, right? This is a consistent selection that Eddie Jones typically pulls out of the bag. And um, it's going to be super exciting. Teams will definitely be eyeing their chance against the Wallabies in that Group C. I think that is really the group of death, um, Group C. Uh, Georgia, you know, with strong front football, set piece, can see an opportunity. The Fijians with their great attacking play, playing very, very well. And Wales obviously turning the corner there against England. All three of those teams will be licking their lips against this Wallaby squad. And Eddie has selected a squad that is either going to be sink or swim, boom or bust, famine or feast. You know, they could go all the way or they could dip out in the pool play. But it's very much a selection that has its eyes on 2025, the Lions, and beyond to the Rugby World Cup in Australia in 2027. I'm going to leave it there, guys. I covered a lot of detail on that one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you did, if you made it this far. Hit like, it helps with um with getting the message out and also with the algorithm here on YouTube. So much appreciated. Enjoy the rest of the rugby.